This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. A crash that injured eight children in southeast Wisconsin yesterday was caused by a driver running a stop sign. Ozaukee County deputies say the impact knocked the Random Lake school bus over. 36 kids were on the bus. Some of them got bruises, concussions, and even broken bones. The SUV driver was ticketed. Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s name will stay on November ballots in Wisconsin. A judge in Madison yesterday denied a request from the Kennedy campaign to take his name off. Kennedy is out of the race and endorsing Donald Trump. Kennedy's lawyer says he plans to appeal. Enrollment at the universities of Wisconsin is up by a little more than 1,000 students. System President Jay Rothman says that's despite some challenges like the bumpy rollout of a new financial aid form and not enough money for the Wisconsin Tuition Promise Program. More official enrollment counts are expected in a couple of weeks. A program that helps small Wisconsin farmers and hunger relief efforts is marking its second anniversary. The Local Food Purchase Assistance Program gives grants to farmers who set aside some of their fresh produce for food pantries. This guaranteed income has allowed farms to invest in their operations and do things that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. The program's Forrest Humphrey says the program allows hunger nonprofits to buy in bulk and cut down on transportation, which reduces their carbon footprint. A new survey says Wisconsin's child care centers need more staff. The State Department of Children and Families research shows about 60 percent of providers have staff shortages. Providers would be able to serve as many as 33,000 more kids if they were at full capacity. 13 percent of Wisconsin children live in poverty. That's according to the Annie E. Casey Foundation. Lauren Relaford of the Children's Defense Fund says poverty is a toxic stress. Children see their parents being stressed. And they take that on, too. And so why are we allowing these children to grow up um, without the necessary resources they need? Efforts to expand the federal child tax credit stalled recently in the U.S. Senate. Relaford says it could have lifted 400,000 children out of poverty nationwide. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now, here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Hospital Sisters of St. Francis Foundation has donated millions of dollars to local organizations months after the closure of two hospitals in the region. According to a press release, the organization has donated $9 million to the Eau Claire Community Foundation, $4.6 million to the Community Foundation of Chippewa County, and $330,000 to Chippewa Valley Technical College. Local governments are still working to address the loss of health care access in the HSHS departure. The Wisconsin Policy Forum is conducting a study on the city of Eau Claire's trash hauling system to determine if any improvements can be made. The organization is comparing the city's system, which includes multiple companies hauling trash on different days, to other cities that may have a single contracted company, use multiple companies in different districts, or feature a publicly owned collection service. City officials ordered the survey after years of complaints about the collection system from residents. A number of highly anticipated construction projects are nearing completion in downtown Ladysmith. According to city officials, the $4 million rebuild project on Minor Avenue is nearly complete and the road recently reopened for traffic. The road is a crucial corridor for small businesses in the city and had been littered with cracked pavement and potholes. A thrift store will also be completed soon, and officials say the store will eventually house a food pantry operated by Indian Head Community Action Agency. The Menominee Police Department is investigating after receiving a picture of a juvenile with an apparent firearm outside the high school. According to a press release, authorities received the picture on Sunday night along with reports that the juvenile in the picture had made some concerning comments about shooting up the school. They determined that no actual threats were made to the school and the juvenile was holding a BB gun in the picture. Authorities have not announced if that juvenile is facing any charges. Charges have been filed against four people accused of stealing from vehicles in Altoona last month. According to court documents, the four people range in age from 17 to 20 and are facing charges of misdemeanor theft and drug possession. Authorities believe that the thefts, which took place in late August in Altoona, are also connected to similar incidents in Stanley, Chippewa Falls, and other communities in the area. Court records also allege the four suspects discussed their plans for the thefts and pawning the items over text messages. Ohio Senator and Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance will visit Eau Claire again on Tuesday for a rally at the Eau Claire Event District. 
The rally is scheduled for 4.30 on Tuesday afternoon with doors opening at 1.30 and tickets available online. The Eau Claire event district also hosted a rally for Vice President Kamala Harris and Governor Tim Walz shortly after his introduction to the ticket. It's the second visit that Senator Vance has made to Eau Claire since joining former President Trump on the Republican ticket. The Menominee Public Library brought in some interesting help to get rid of invasive plants around their building. According to library officials, about 30 goats were brought to the library to eat through the tall grass, buckthorn, and other invasive species from the nearby lake. Officials say bringing in the goats to clean up the outdoor area at the library is part of a bigger plan to develop the area into a community space. The goats were provided by Scapegoats Farms, which offers vegetation management services to anybody. Marshfield Clinic Health System is now offering flu vaccines at their primary care locations across the state. According to a press release, flu season doesn't peak until December, but some children will need two doses of the vaccine to be properly protected, so they should make their first appointment in September or October. They also say this year's vaccine has been updated to protect against the three most common strains of the flu. Health officials estimate that over 20,000 people died from the disease in the U.S. last year. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Brewers can clinch a playoff spot today. Hi, I'm Jimmy Cusco with sports, filling in for Mike Lemons. The Brewers got two home runs from Willie Adamas yesterday and took down the Philadelphia Phillies 6-2. With the win, the Brewers can now clinch a division title and a playoff berth today with a win and a Chicago Cubs loss. Milwaukee gets the Phillies again this afternoon in Game 2 of a seven-game homestand that also includes Arizona. Quarterbacks in the state of Wisconsin have had some misfortune this fall. Badgers quarterback Tyler Van Dyke will miss the rest of the season after tearing his ACL in Saturday's loss to Alabama. Braden Locke will take over behind center for Wisconsin. The Badgers are off until a week from Saturday when they take on USC. The injury bug got the Packers last week when Jordan Love was hurt late in the season opening loss to the Eagles. He also missed Sunday's game against the Colts. Coach Matt LaFleur said that his return will strictly be a medical decision and that Love can play even without practicing this week, although LaFleur said he'd prefer Love get in some work. Filling in for Mike Clemens, I'm Jimmy Cusco with Civic Media Sports. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. The box office is looking strong so far heading into fall. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice stayed in the top spot for the second week in a row, taking in almost $52 million this past weekend. The Michael Keaton-led sequel has now taken in $188 million domestically and $264 million worldwide. Newcomer Speak No Evil came in second place with over $11 million. The well-reviewed thriller starring James McAvoy had a pretty good opening weekend, considering you could also stream it at home. In third place is the resilient Deadpool in Wolverine, which brought in just over $5 million in week number eight of its release. In fourth place was right-wing commentator Matt Walsh's Am I Racist, which took in a little over $4 million. And in fifth place was the Ronald Reagan biopic Reagan, starring Dennis Quaid, which took in a little over $2 million. One box office casualty from the weekend would be David Batista's The Killer's Game, which was a box office bust. Lots of good movies still on the way this fall, so stay tuned. The 76th Annual Emmy Awards are in the books. Despite The Bear receiving the most ever Emmy nominations for a comedy series in a single year at 23, Hacks won the Emmy for Best Comedy Series. Shogun had 25 Emmys and one Best Drama, as well as Best Lead Actor and Actress. The show took home 18 Emmys in its first season. That's a record for a single year. This is the second time the Emmys have been held in 2024, as the 75th annual ceremony was held in January due to the writers and actors' strikes. Hack's winning Outstanding Comedy Series over The Bear was not really an upset, but was a surprise. Lead actress in the show, Jean Smart, won Best Actress in a Comedy Series, and the show also won the Emmy for Best Comedy Writing. Speaking of comedy, taking home the Emmy for Outstanding Talk Series was The Daily Show, and in the Scripted Variety Series, it was Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. If you haven't checked it out, it's an absolute must. Brilliant show. Could Ewan McGregor play Obi-Wan Kenobi again? It seems the Force is still with him. After a string of canceled Star Wars shows in the last few years, the franchise is rethinking bringing back McGregor to play Kenobi, and McGregor says he's game. McGregor started playing Kenobi in 1999 in The Phantom Menace and played the character in the six-episode series Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney+. Disney Plus. The network has not given a definitive answer yet on whether or not the series will return for a second season. McGregor says there are still Obi-Wan stories to be told. Well, there is one Goonie who is willing to say die, and her name is Martha Plimpton. Addressing rumors of a Goonies sequel, Plimpton posted on Instagram that there is no script, Spielberg is not involved, and there is no one from the original cast attached. But Goonies apparently stick together. Corey Feldman backs his fellow castmate, confirming on the artist formerly known as Twitter that he has not heard a peep about a sequel. Buzz kill. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, 
Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. For today, mostly sunny with a high in the mid-80s. South winds at about 5 to 10. Clear tonight, low around 60. Sunshine and 83 for Wednesday. Wednesday night, partly cloudy, a low of 60 degrees. Slight chance of a shower Thursday with a high near 83. Currently 66 degrees. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.